When it comes to amateur astronomy, few things are as exciting as actually getting out to observe the nighttime sky. But there is one thing that comes pretty close, and that's whenever I get to share a new product with you all. In today's video, we're going to unbox, test, and review the first zoom eyepiece that I've ever used with my telescope. The good people at Sivbani reached out to me and sent over this product for review, and I'll be sure to leave a link to it in the description below. Now let's get started by unboxing this product and seeing what you get right out of the package. First thing we have right here is a nice uh, microfiber cloth to clean it and your other eyepieces with. Nice little included accessory there for that. We then get to the actual eyepiece here, which is wrapped well in some bubble wrap. Some more plastic wrapping as well. And here we have the 7 to 21 millimeter zoom eyepiece. Take off the caps here for the top and the bottom. Um, so the basic design of a zoom eyepiece is that you can easily shift from one magnification to another. Uh, this one takes you from 7 millimeters to 21 millimeters in terms of its focal length. So depending on your telescope, that's probably going to be a pretty good range of medium to high magnification for viewing the moon, the planets, even a good number of deep sky objects. I'm pretty impressed off the bat with the build quality that we have here of this. Um, I'll be sure to put it more to the test later on when we go outside and actually look at some objects. But um, it's got a good feel to it and it's got a good construction to it as well. One thing I like seeing, as you have with almost every eyepiece these days, is a uh, one and a quarter inch threading at the bottom for any type of lunar, planetary filter, light pollution filters that you may have for observing. Um, good to see that being a part of this product as well. Overall, the initial impressions of it, nice, sturdy, I'm pretty impressed. Let's move on to our next step of this process by taking a look at the actual design specifications of this specific zoom eyepiece, along with some things that you may want to consider when you're looking to buy one for your own telescope. As we move on to look at the design and performance of this lens, be sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy these types of reviews. Let's begin by talking about how a zoom eyepiece actually works. This basic design is like having an eyepiece with an adjustable Barlow lens built into it. As you move from 21 millimeters to seven millimeters, you're adjusting the difference of the interior lens up or down, which increases or decreases the magnification of your view. It's a simple and effective design that allows you to smoothly move from medium to high magnifications on the moon, planets, or deep sky objects. If that's the case, why doesn't everyone just buy one zoom eyepiece and call it a day for their eyepiece collection? The simple fact is that when you're introducing this internal Barlow lens and these different layers of glass that have to shift, you're also going to be introducing some aberrations and imperfections in the image that you see. Before we go outside and put this lens to a real world test, I think it's important to understand how to figure out what the highest useful magnification is for your telescope, be it for this zoom eyepiece or any other one that you may currently own or look to buy. If you push your telescope too far in terms of magnification, you're going to lose resolution and end up with a blurry image that is not going to be enjoyable to look at for a long evening. You have to know the limits of what any telescope is in terms of its magnification, be it a budget one that you've just bought or one that's thousands of dollars. To determine magnification, you're going to take the focal length of your telescope and divide it by the focal length of your eyepiece. For example, my Orion X-T8i has a focal length of 1200 millimeters. So this zoom lens will provide me with 57 to 171 times magnification. Now, how do I know if these numbers work best for my telescope? To determine the highest useful magnification for your telescope, you're gonna to wanna to take the diameter of your scope and multiply it first by 30. This tells me that on most nights, about 240 times magnification is going to be the max that I'm going to want to push my scope for observing the nighttime sky. 
Since this zoom eyepiece maxes out at around 171 times magnification in my telescope, I know that this is gonna be perfectly fine to use and actually quite good for medium and high magnification views of different targets. On some nights, you can get 40 times or 50 times the diameter of your telescope, but those magnifications in the 300 times and 400 times range are few and far between. If you find that this specific zoom eyepiece doesn't quite fit for your telescope, this company, along with many others, also makes different ranges of these products with various focal lengths. Just find the one that works best for you. Now that we understand the design of this zoom lens along with how to determine its magnification, let's take this new product outside and put it to the test by observing our closest neighbor, the moon. As we move outside for the final process of this review, I'm gonna be putting this zoom eyepiece through its paces by studying the surface of the moon. We're going to be going up and down the Terminator line looking for any craters and features that can really help to test it out at low, medium, and high magnifications. To help me out with this, I've installed a lunar filter on it, which will hopefully cut down on some of the glare and also bring out some more surface detail. Let's get started by setting this eyepiece up at its lowest magnification at 21 millimeters. This is a good sharp image. We've got the Terminator line there, the moon. We've got the Copernicus crater looking very nice tonight. The moon's about a day after first quarter phase, so we still have some good shadows and surface details coming in on it. Well, let's see how we can zoom in on this Copernicus crater by going from 21 millimeters to 16. to 9 and to 7. Let me slightly adjust the focus here to get it sharp again. You will have to do some adjustments to focus as you switch the focal lengths for this zoom eyepiece, but that's pretty typical of most of them in this price range. I gotta say, one thing that's surprising me here is I'm actually more impressed with the views at high magnification than at low magnification. That's not exactly what I expected. I think what's going on is this is a byproduct of the design of this zoom lens, where at 21 millimeters, it's actually farther away from your eye. And as the zoom eyepiece shifts its internal lens, it brings the image closer so that at seven millimeters, you're getting a more full image in the eyepiece at higher magnifications. It definitely has good views at 21 millimeters, but I definitely do prefer how full the image is in the eyepiece here at seven millimeters. That is a nice sharp view that really rivals the uh, fixed eyepieces that I have that are in this price range. Let's go up here and look at some other craters on the moon near the Terminator line. Some beautiful detail coming in on those. Yeah, this is, especially at higher magnifications, a very impressive, sharp view. So can one zoom eyepiece really replace all of the individual lenses in your collection? That depends. If you're a purist and a perfectionist with a high dollar telescope, you're definitely going to want to stick with eyepieces with individual focal lengths. But if you're new to astronomy or looking for a budget workhorse lens that's fun to use, I would definitely suggest picking up something like this zoom lens. It's got a great price to performance ratio, and it's just honestly fun to be able to zoom in on things like the moon and planets smoothly from one magnification to another. If you have any experiences with zoom eyepieces or questions on how they work, please be sure to let me know in the comments section below. Thank you all so much for your support and clear skies from Late Night Astronomy.